Good morning, everyone. My name is Carla, and you have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch, but also other crafts that I enjoy, and a little bit of life thrown in. Um, today is floss tube number 186. It is Sunday, April 16th, 2023, and I want to say welcome. If this is your first time finding my channel, I hope that you like what you see, want to hit like and subscribe, and all the good stuff. Um, and if this is not your first time finding my channel, if you are somebody who comes back, who's come back, comes back whew, every week, um, to share my, uh, endeavors, my successes, my failures, um, in this, uh, sort of crafty world, then, um, thank you so much for coming back and spending this time with me. Um, it really does mean a lot to me and, um, thank you. Um, if you really like what you see, if you want to, I am just like very discombobulated today. Can you tell? I just, I, I'm like not comfortable in my own skin this morning. I don't know what it is. Um, anyway, if you really like what you see after that little aside that is not going to be, uh, entertaining to anybody, um, I do have a super thanks button below. So, um, that is a way that you can give me a monetary tip. I used to have the buy me a coffee and the co and all that kind of stuff. And actually the super thanks is a lot easier. It just all goes to one place. Um, along with like my ad revenue, which, you know, before anybody gets all excited and like, Ooh, yeah. Um, I don't, I get, you know, maybe a, a penny a day or something like that as far as and revenue and revenue. So, um, it's not exactly anything to write home about, but again, it's nothing to sneeze at either. Right. Um, I have a cat walking around between my feet, of course, because I started talking to the camera. So he must come over here. Um, as soon as I do that, do you want to come? And say hi, mister. Well, come here. Come here. Come here. Okay, like you guys want to watch the top of my head while I try and convince this cat to get someplace where I can pick him up. Come here. Oh my God, he's being very cat-like lately. Very, very cat-like. Ugh. Okay, this is Baggy, my very cat-like cat. He's being very annoying lately. Um, anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, as a reminder, I do have a Zoom scheduled today um, at 2 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. All the information is in the description box below. Hopefully, this video will upload in time for if you catch it, you could... Um, jump on the zoom. Uh, last week, that was not the case. It took forever for my video to upload last week. Um, and I finally rebooted my internet and then it went. So maybe my internet was a problem. And, you know, speak, speaking of the zoom, um, maybe that's why I was having all that trouble last month too. I don't know. I will reboot it again. Um, once this video uploads, hopefully it all happens in a good amount of, uh, with time to spare. Um, I will reboot it, um, and again, try and get on Zoom, um, a different way using the different site that's specifically, specifically for Chrome users, and, um, hopefully everything will be good. Um, yeah, so hopefully that everything will work out really well. Um, I, I do so enjoy the Zooms, and rest assured that even if I'm having problems last time, it didn't affect anybody else. So, um, everybody was able to have a really nice, relaxing stitchy zoom meetup. I was the one who's popping in and out and getting kicked off and having to reboot and all that kind of stuff. But everybody else was there enjoying their talks. So, um, please do join us if you are so inclined. Um, and then I don't know when I'm going to schedule it for next month. Just, you know, stay tuned kind of thing. Um, and we'll see. Uh, I always give a California, Southern California weather report. Um, I live very close to Disneyland for reference. Um, I can hear the Disneyland fireworks every night. So if that uh, kind of gives you an idea. Um, our weather has been kind of odd this week. Um, when I was talking about the weather last week, I, you know, I always look at the weather report, right? And it said that it was supposed to get really hot by this weekend and sunny and everything. And I don't know. They they must not have been reading their meteorological meteorological meteorological. 
see I just I'm just I can't I can't say it anyway they must not have been reading the reports correctly because it was like overcast and we actually had like sprinkly rain a couple times this week and the temperature went down it didn't go up so we're still kind of like high 60s um but again now it says that it's supposed to get hot again in the middle of the month I mean the middle of the week so who knows um, I also read something that because we've had rain this season or a, you know a decent amount of rain that we're gonna have super bloom this spring which might be why I have been feeling sick maybe it isn't actually a cold it's just uh, allergies I'm I'm kind of thinking now that that might be what is happening with me because I felt better you know I had a cold last weekend thank you everybody for all of your well wishes um, and I do think it was like a cold last weekend, but it was getting better. I was very happy that like it didn't settle into that tickly cough that I sometimes get because that is just murder at night. Even though I know I was coughing during my video last weekend, that was like my biggest tickly cough incident. And um, in the past, I've had that kind of thing stick around and happen a lot when I'm sleeping. Um, and that didn't happen this week. Um, and so I was feeling better, feeling better. And then Friday, I started feeling sick again. Um, just kind of like that scratchy throat thing and just kind of feeling blech, um, and sinus headache. And, you know, and I started thinking, well, you know, maybe it has nothing to do with an illness or, or an actual cold or virus or anything like that. I think I'm having some kind of allergy attack. So in which case there doesn't seem to be a lot I can do about it. I already take allergy medication and so I think it's more of a symptom treatment as opposed to, you know, doing anything about it. And if we're having super blooms in California, then I guess might be something just to live through. Um, but um, anyway, um, I have, I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, I've been feeling kind of emotionally like kind of blah all week. And I don't know if it, again, is allergy slash cold stuff. Or the fact that um, my mom's birthday is Tuesday, April 18th, tax day as well. My taxes are taken care of, so that's all good. Um, I don't know. I just, I think I've been thinking about my mom kind of in the back of my mind a lot and missing her. And I think that's just kind of bringing me down a little bit. So, you know, it's not, I'm not in like any kind of deep depression or anything like that. I just feel feeling kind of blah and you know how it is it's like I feel like I'm plodding through my day and I have to go to work and I drag myself to work and I drag myself home and then you know in the evenings I enjoy myself I do my crafting and I cuddle my kitty and I watch tv and you know but then it all starts again the next day and I just have been feeling that way kind of just blah um and which is okay I mean everybody goes through that um I just feel kind of I have a little bit of a a little cloud of sadness or melancholy I think it's more melancholy to be quite honest um which is a nicer word right it's just sort of air of melancholy and I think a lot of it has to do with missing my mom and just all the changes that are happening in my life and stuff like that but anyway this too shall pass uh doing videos for you guys on Sundays always makes me feel better even when I'm like not in a great mood to start with I'm in a good mood by the time I finish it because I'm sharing all of my all of the really good stuff with you guys and then I get all sorts of really nice comments and that helps brighten my week for the next week and so that's a good cycle but I just want to let you know um you know energy wise emotional energy I should say is kind of just felt a little bit blah this week I did get a chance to do my laundry <laughs> for those of you that follow my laundry saga um there was like um but it, there was a premium on those washers man I'm you know, I, I got my one little load in, but while I was doing my laundry, like two people came, the other two washers were being used when I got in there and, uh, two people came and were like, are you done? Are you done? No, I'm not done. I'm still using the washer. So I hope that Wednesday afternoons is not all of a sudden going to be some big, you know, premium time for the little laundry room that's by my apartment. Um, I mean, there's laundry facilities all over this complex, but there's one that's close to me. And it only has three washers in it. I only ever use one at a time because I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of rude to use more than one when, you know, there's a lot of people who are trying to use a small amount of stuff. But anyway, I was able to do it. And my knees were, were feeling it. 
feeling the up and down the stairs three times the entire next day, I gotta tell you. Okay, um, I don't really have a lot to talk about today. I guess that goes along with the kind of feeling blah stuff. I just don't feel like I have anything that interesting to share. Um, so let's just get into the whips. Um, I worked on one, two, three, five, five different projects this week as far as stitching and then some crochet stuff that I have to show you. I'm still really enjoying the crochet. Um, still feeling a little bit guilty for all the time that I'm spending on the crochet and not doing other stuff. Um, I again had really big plans to work on my little golden books yesterday and just didn't have the mental capacity to do it. I still haven't hung Gigi. I, I will, but I just haven't had the chance to do it yet. Um, and again, I don't know what, if you guys will see it because that's the other thing is like, I'm only going to climb up on the step stool to, to hang the things. And when I'm fresh, like probably on Saturday. Um, and then I have to leave them for 24 hours before I actually hang the thing on it. Um, which I did last time and it still fell off. So I don't know, but I'm going to double, I'm going to double hook. Um, so stay tuned when she's back up there, but anyway, let's get into the whips. So I worked on my mini solar system this week. This is artwork or adapted from artwork by Adrian Chesterman and it is a, a chart by Artisy. And I'm stitching this on 22 count Hardinger, uh, two over one full cross. I was gonna do tent stitch, but I like I like uh, 28 count tent stitch, but the 22 count just I don't know. It just I'm not one of those people that's like very like oh it's not enough coverage, but it just it, it didn't seem right when I was doing it. So anyway. So there is my, it's a whole other diagonal, which I know when you're looking at a full coverage on smaller, small-ish fabric, you know, it doesn't look like very much, but that's actually a lot of confetti, but the colors are really bright. And I think this is going to be really, really pretty when it's, when it gets going. Now this just fits in this little thing, but just a tiny bit too tight. Okay. Um, I worked on the cardinal that I am making for my friend Tracy. Um, I'm using this pattern book. Uh, Birds for counter cross stitch and needle paint. This is old. So let me see if I can see a copyright or anything on this. This is book six. Oh, this is from 1976. So that gives you an idea of, uh, but you know what? Good patterns are timeless, right? So this is the cardinal that I'm working on. And I got that flower finished and the leaf that goes with it and a bunch more in the tail of the cardinal. I'm a teeny bit concerned um, because there's two reds in this and I'm using the called for. I just don't know if there's going to be enough of a contrast. Um, but I'm trusting the process at the moment and we'll see <laughs> if, if I get to the end and I feel like there's not enough contrast in the two reds, um, which, you know, I can see it when I'm looking at it here, but I just don't know. And I don't know how much of contrast there has to be if it's supposed to be really subtle and it's just going to give a nice little feeling of the contrast. But if there isn't, then I might end up having to go through and like maybe on the darker color, putting another like, uh, one strand or something over the top leg of a darker red. Um, we'll see. 
Okay, I worked on my uh, my Chatelaine, my Green Lace Mandala this week, which is not really in my theme, but I hadn't worked on it in quite a while, and I, I just felt like it, so I did it. And here is the awful, awful picture. There's no, never any cover photos or anything of the Chatelaine, so basically any pictures you get are from like taking pictures of other people's work, um, which with my setup is never going to be very good to show you guys. But anyway, that's where I am. I'm at the point where I'm working on this sort of border part. Um, and then, then there's all kinds of stuff that happens in here, but this is, this is the stuff that I'm working on right now. So I decided instead of doing the outlines all the way around, which was getting a teeny bit boring um I decided to go ahead and start filling them in there's like five colors in each of those little what do they call them uh, in Russian in Russian architecture I think they call them onions but anyway so I started filling doing that and then I brought some more down as well so I think I'll probably when I work on it do it that way um, this is a less exciting part of this uh, piece to work on, but I am really happy with it, and I'm I'm enjoying working on the shadow lines a lot. <clears throat> and I think I've I've mentioned it before, but if you haven't been watching me regularly. Um, the shadow lines that I chose to do are all sort of mid-size, small to mid-size. They're not the huge ones, um, which for me, I feel is perfect because I'm getting all of the feelings of doing a big shadow lane, and, but they're not going to take me multiple years. Now, I mean, it still may take me a year or two years because I don't work on stuff every single day, but, um, but I, I like the size of the projects a lot and, uh, and I have several, several kitted up even, um, so that when I get this one done, then I, I will have other things to move on to, but um, I am really liking, like, liking that mid-size project. Um, okay, I worked on Bellatrix a little bit. I feel like I'm flying through the video today, which, Either means it's going to be shorter or it means I'm going to start talking a lot at the end and it'll be just as long as it always is. Um, let's see. <clears throat> okay, Bellatrix by Bella Filipina. This was my first Bella Filipina, I think. Um, it's a super popular one. So I, I, <clears throat> when I don't go on Facebook that often, but when I, you know, check it I, in, in the, the groups that I'm in, this one shows up a lot. It's like, I just finished Bellatrix. And it's like, every time somebody says that, I'm like, oh, I got to get. I gotta get mine done. So here she is, and I worked on the dress this time. So I filled in a, a big chunk actually uh, in right in here. She's a big girl though, so. This is a hand dye by Rolanda Fabric, which I just think is so, so, so pretty. <clears throat> and then, And then last but not least, I worked on to everything there is a season. Um, which is by Cross My Heart Inc. This is an old pattern from 1994. One of the first things I started because it is in honor of my dad. He loved the song by the birds, turn, 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 from this passage from Ecclesiastes, and 
so it totally made me think of him. Um, and this is being done on a 14 count dynasty fabric. Blue Dynasty is what it's called. And I have to say, I'm proud of myself because I finished this top bit of the border um, with the hated light effects, DMC light effects. So I buckled down and I, and I did that before I got to do fun stuff. So next time I pull it out, I'm going to try and do that with the bottom section right there. And then um, I finished the top. Now, the, this bottom part isn't done, but the top part of the the spring tree is done and then I, I pulled a little bit down in the in the border again so there is that <clears throat> and actually I really enjoyed working on this this week um, I got into it the, the evenings that I was working on it. I was like, I was like enjoying it. So that's good. That's good. It doesn't feel like a chore. Sometimes, sometimes when I work on projects, especially when they're getting older, as both in they're older as in it's an older pattern, and older as in I started it a long time ago. Sometimes they start to feel like a chore, and that's when I have to really consider whether I'm still into doing it. Um, but when I was working on that one, I was really enjoying it. So that is a good sign for me. Okay, so that was all my stitching for this week. Um, I did stitch almost every day. Um, so yeah, I didn't, I don't, I didn't stitch on Thursday. I think I just crocheted, um, but I did pretty good. Yeah, because I, I worked on one of them twice, so. Uh, I worked on to everything there this season two times this week. So, yeah, I was stitching every day. Um, I also crocheted. <clears throat> so, you guys have been watching me the last couple weeks know that it's now my new my new thing that I'm, like, getting very into. Um, and I thought about it. I think one of the reasons I really like it so much is, A, it's something different. So, it's something new to be excited about. And, B, I just really like this, you know, getting projects done. Now, I realize with the stitching, I could get more projects done if I chose smaller projects, but that's just not what I'm into, right? So, um, so at least for now with the crochet, I'm more into smaller projects. Like, I'm not starting a ton of blankets, right? Because those would take forever, and that's not where my, my interest lays at the moment. So, um, I did on Sunday, I did another pair of slippers, like the ones that I showed you, um, I like these, but I did them with the the variegated yarn, the purpley, gray, blue one um, for my friend's mom. And I, I don't have them to show you because I did give them to her. <laughs> and she loved them. She's 93, and she um, they all said that she's wearing them when she watches TV, and she just loves them. And they're, you know, so that made me feel good. I didn't do a pair for my friend, and I'll be honest with you, I'm going to wait, probably do a pair for my friend, because... Um, I don't know if this is, I hope, I hope this doesn't sound, uh, unkind, but everything, almost everything that I've made for my friends, my work friend, um, because of their culture, they're Filipino and they basically, as it should be, but they worship their mom, right? This is the same lady I just made the slippers for, the 93 year old. Um, if I make a pair of slippers for my friend, her mom is going to take them. So, and I already made a pair for her mom, but that's what's going to happen. So everything that I've made for my friend that's kind of like, oh, look, I made this for you and I feel like all proud. She doesn't have it because her mom took it. And it doesn't bother her because everything that she has is for her mom, right? But as someone who's creating something for my friend, it kind of makes me feel bad. Like... Okay, I love that your mom likes it, but I didn't make it for your mom. I made it for you, and you're not using it because you just let she just took it. You know, oh, I like that. I'll take it. And 
So anyway, so I want to wait and I'm not going to make slippers for my friend until probably closer towards the holidays. Um, because her mom is not going to be, uh, in the U.S., you know, for that much longer because she kind of goes between both the Philippines and here. And, um, I don't know. So I think I'm going to wait because I made a pair for her mom that were especially made for, for her. And the pair that is for my friend, I kind of want her to use. So anyway, so that's, that's my feelings on that. So I, I didn't work on that this week. Um, I also worked a bit on the shrug that I showed you last weekend, uh, or last week on my video, but I mean, I put in like three or four more rows, which is not going to be exciting to look at. So I'm not going to show you, but I have two things that I am working on that is exciting. So I am making or attempting to make a basket. This is what it looks like. Um, and this is the base of it. So I just got to the point where... Um, when you do the corners, when you're doing the flat part of the corner, it's like a, you do two, two single stitches in one with like, um, with two chain stitches that makes the corner. And then when you start to go up, you take out those chain stitches, um, and that, that pulls it up. So that's where I am right now. I mean... And I know it's like, I think it's either going to need to be blocked or, um, depending, they said like if the, if the yarn that you're using isn't stiff enough, um, you can paint the inside of it with like a fabric stiffener. Um, so that might have to happen. Um, I was having trouble. I kind of like was following the pattern, but then it was giving me trouble. You can see on this side, it's a little bit wonky. Um, the way that the pattern's written and I don't know why this is, I guess because certain things like this, you can just stitch around in a big spiral. This pattern, it has you stitch and then it has you chain one and turn around to go the other way. I don't know what the purpose of that is, but every time I'm doing that, it's messing up the count on that side and making it look wonky. So I just decided to start just stitching around in a spiral and we'll see what happens. Um, I know it's sort of arrogant of me to think I know better than the pattern designer, but it's not that I think I know better. It's just that's not working for me. So I'm going to do it my way and we'll see what happens. It could turn out looking like a big mess. And in which case, as I've learned, if I really hate it when it's done, all I have to do is just rip it all out and turn it back into a ball of yarn to use for something else. So, um, so yeah. So this is actually one ball of yarn and then I have two more. So I have enough yarn to make it a nice tallish basket, which is nice and soft. You know, I mean, it'll hold either more yarn or cross stitch patterns or cross stitch whips or whatever, but it's kind of fun to work on. This is the same yarn that I've uh, made the slippers with. So it's nice and thick and chunky. It's, um, Lion brand thick and quick. This color is swirl, but I do really like this lion brand thick and quick, um, for the slippers and stuff. Um, I showed you some last week. This is, this is turbine. And it's very, obviously you can tell it's like very striped, right? Um, this is, oh, let's scroll again. this is the one that I made my slippers out of that I showed you last week. Or tech. So, I do really like that. <clears throat> I like working with it. It's, I like the way it feels. Um, okay. So, that's one of the crochet projects that I am currently working on. Um, 
And then I finished something this week that I'm excited about. So this is my first amigurumi elephant. Now this was the kit that I showed you guys that kind of started this whole thing, but I didn't use the kit, kit yarn because it's me and I just have to do weird stuff. So um, I decided to do it with this cotton, this ball of cotton uh, yarn that I had. And I think he looks really cute, it, kind of multi multicolor like this. I just didn't want to do the stupid gray cheap yarn that came with the kit. Um, so I learned a lot making this amigurumi. First of all, I learned it's not that hard. Um, and I was amazed that as it was coming together, it was coming together. Um, <laughs> I got a set of the safety eyes and I'll show you, I got the package of it. Um, and I, I kind of like, I don't know if you want to call it messed up. I was like, I had done the head and I was about halfway down on the body when I ordered the eyes and I got the eyes and I was excited to try them. So I'm like, I will stick the eyes in. And I didn't think about the fact of further in the pattern, like the way you do the body and the head is one piece, right? And so you, you crochet it and you go down to the end and then you um, kind of crochet the bottom edge together, right? But the, the, the end is going to be where you started. And I didn't think about that when I put the eyes in. So um, when I put the eyes in, I realized that it was kind of like off center of, you know, the body. So I just made it with him. He's got his head turned a little bit, which I think looks fine. I mean, I guess technically if, if I had done it correctly and actually the safety eyes were not part of the initial kit, you're supposed to just do a black French knot. Um, but I was really excited to try the safety eyes. Um, so they probably should have been over like over here a little bit more and the trunk, you know, more centered. But I figured that it looked fine with his head a little bit turned. And as long as I put the trunk under the eyes, then it would be fine. So I think he's really cute. And I think I did actually a pretty good job. I mean, my stitches look pretty even and um, I, I, I could have maybe stuffed him a little, a little, um, tighter because that's one thing I wasn't quite sure about is like how tight I should stuff him but I mean I think he looks really good so and I'm very excited to try more amigurumi so I don't know what do you guys think I just think he's really cute I'm really proud of this that I made this this started out as a ball of yarn and now it is a little toy. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so. With a cat hair on it. Of course. So. <clears throat> so. Um, yeah. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm, I'm, I am. I'm just really, yeah, I'm just really, really happy with this guy. And I think that, well, I know there's going to be more of this stuff in my future because I already know what I want to start on next. So you will see that next week. I don't know if you'll see it finished, but you'll see it. Okay. So that's it for all of my projects this week. Um, crocheting and, and cross stitching. That was, that was it. Uh, haul, I did get some yarn. Um, I, I got a couple sets and these are very inexpensive on Amazon. I got a couple sets of like these like mini balls again, because of amigurumi, it's like just a way to have a lot of colors. Um, I ordered this one first and this is yarn inspirations. These, these are a little bit thinner of a yarn than this one. And this one I ordered because I was watching a YouTube, uh, crochet channel that I, that I found that I like. And she mentioned that these were good for Amigurumi, this brand, which is Mira Handcraft. So these are a little bit thicker, but these were both 
pretty inexpensive, like I think $10.15 or something like that. Um, and so it just gives me a lot of color options. And when you're doing these little toys, these little amigurumi, you don't need a lot of a single color. So um, it's a way to be able to have a lot of colors without having to do a lot of expense. And then I did order, as I said, I ordered the safety eyes. Um, not something that's necessary, but I just thought it was kind of cool. Um, so it came in a little set like this. Again, I ordered one of the least expensive ones just because I wanted to try it out. This one actually has noses too. So there's a bunch of different eyes. There's like colored eyes. And then there's some different noses. And then these are the backs that kind of, um, the way that these things work is they have like a, like almost like a screw kind of texture and you poke them through and then when the, the back goes on, it catches on these so they don't come out. Um, you still, if you're making toys for like little children, you still should use these. Um, and if you're making <clears throat> like cat toys. Now that's a big controversy too, because I looked it up. I'm like, can you crochet like kitty toys and stuff? And <sighs> letting cats play with anything like that, you never want to do it unless they're being supervised. If they swallow yarn or thread, it can like really, really damage their intestines. So I don't know that I'm going to do that for Baggy. He, I mean, he likes toys, but I'm not sure that he needs toys that are made out of yarn. He, uh, he can stick to the felt ones because he doesn't really chew on stuff or anything like that, but better safe than sorry. He is kind of interested when I'm crocheting though, more, more so than when I'm, um, stitching. <laughs> But I think, as it is with my stitching, he's not so much interested in it in that he's interested in what I'm doing. He's interested in stopping me from doing it because I'm it's taking time away from him. So I have noticed that when I am crocheting, he tends to want to jump up on the bed where I'm working and immediately sits on my arm. Uh, not because he's playing with it, because it's like he's trying to stop me from doing it. So somehow he manages to always like plop himself on the ball of yarn and I'm like, and all of a sudden I can't, I can't pull my yarn because it's like under the cap. So, um, I think he likes me crafting, but you know, not when it gets in the way of him sitting on my, on my chest and me petting him. Okay, so plans for the coming week, obviously more of the same, working on the projects that I've been working on, but we have passed the middle of the month now, so it's time for me to start thinking about projects for next month. Um, next month is for um, May. My um, <clears throat> theme is fur feathers and scales, which is going to be actually difficult for me because I have so many projects that fit that and so many projects that I want to work on. Um, I'm definitely going to be <clears throat> working on this. I'm starting this with Julie from uh, Stitching at the Cabin. Um, we're going to be doing this Prickly Owl, which is a little dimensions kit. So that's going to be fun. I don't know that we have a hashtag. I, I don't know that we need one, but <clears throat> we're going to be working on this together. So if you have this pattern and want to start it with us, please do. Um, it's kind of like going to be a double friends thing for me because I'm going to be stitching it, you know, with Julie. And this chart was gifted to me by uh, my friend Don Frisch from Arizona. Um, she's the first, like, in real life floss tube, you know, stitching person that I met. Um, the only thing is it, the kit came with this, which, you know, me and Cream are way, Ada, you know. Um, so I, I pulled out this, which is also a kit like Ada, but it's blue. Um, I might over dye this a little bit. Um, I haven't really decided yet, but I think it's going to be pretty. Um, and it will make me happier to stitch on something that isn't cream or white. I just don't like stitching on cream or white. Um, I did like look at my fancier fabrics and stuff. And um, I didn't have anything that... I had some really pretty blues, but they were like 
almost like too dark. Um, so I'm thinking about maybe putting a little bit of turquoise in this so I get a little bit of modeling and maybe take out some of the stiffness, but we'll see. I have a couple weeks to decide on that. Um, so I know definitely I'm starting that one, but you know, for feathers and scales, I have, you know, two dragon projects that I can put in the rotation. I have so many cat projects. You guys know that. And then I have my pandas, um, which haven't come out in a while. So I feel like I should put those in the, in the mix and, um, and this new bird. And then I was thinking about starting the Teresa Wensler peacock also, which now I'm like, I'm not sure. It might be just too much, too much. So mm, Teresa Wensler peacock might wait until maybe next year, but, um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm still thinking, thinking about it. Um, but yeah, so I have to start, start pulling projects for that. Um, I've tended, I feel like in the last couple months to be like overly ambitious. Like I've put like 10 or 12 projects in the mix and then I end up only really working on six or seven, which doesn't matter. You know, it's, this is just a way for me to kind of cull down my big list of stuff to work on to a smaller list that's more manageable each month. And, um, I'm still making progress. So, um, yeah. Uh, but if there's any projects that I particularly, that I have that you guys particularly know of that you really want to see more of or whatever that would fit into my fur feathers and scales, let me know. And I'll think about, you know, adding that one in. Um, <clears throat> so I think that's it for today, you guys. Um, I have to try and get this uploaded and everything timely so that hopefully I don't have any problems with the Zoom. Um. But I hope you guys have a great week coming up. Um, and, uh, yeah, everything, you know. <laughs> Let me know if you have any tips, tricks as far as my new crochet endeavor. Um, I do want to say that I, like I, I told you guys last time, and of course I'm looking at what did I do? Oh, <clears throat> that I got these candles from Amazon. I think I said they were under five dollars and that was wrong they were like seven something um but they have actually really helped a lot as far as um my hand not hurting from crocheting it is definitely learning new muscles in my hand so um you know I I can't I'm not having any problems but I can see how doing a lot of it could cause issues. I also did notice that using the cotton, because this is 100% cotton, which is not as soft and stretchy as an acrylic. And I did notice that I could feel it like on my finger, like like it was not causing like a, a yarn burn. I mean, not to a bad extent, like there's, you can't see anything and like when I touch it now, but. I, I noticed when I was getting towards the end of making that, that I could feel it, you know, which across my knuckle and stuff, which is something to be aware of. Um, <clears throat> but I do like these. Um, I got two more. The only problem with them is they are a little bit hard to get open that first time, but because there's like this little notched bit right there that needs to fit into this little notched bit in there. Um, I did mark it with uh, a Sharpie, which helps, but of course, then when I use it, then you twist it and there's a little rubber, there's a set of rubber rings that depending on the, on the size crochet hook that you use, um, <clears throat> will keep it in there nice and tight. But I do, I'm, I'm liking these. And I, so I got a couple more because that way I don't have to keep changing them. Um, between the different projects. I know you can get more expensive crochet hooks that actually have an ergonomic handle and everything. But I kind of like this idea of ones that are, that you can switch out. And so yeah, I'm, that is like the one little tool that my novice self would, would recommend. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <clears throat> I hope to see you guys on my Zoom today. Um, and in, in whether or not I see you today, I will see you next Sunday. 
um, for my regularly scheduled video. So until I see you again, please remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye.